Good morning and welcome. Welcome to those of you who are here assisting in our worship this day. We thank God for you and welcome especially to all of you in your homes or wherever you might be as you look in on this worship service. We welcome you to the worship service of Lamb of God and pray that this experience this morning, the, the service, the songs, the prayers, everything will lift you up and give you strength through this coming week. Some announcements that I would like to share with you. The alt flowers on the altar this morning are given to the glory of God from Ken and Bonnie Petit and in memory of Art and Doris Petit and parents of Ken and also for Maxine and Ken Kennedy, mother and brother of Bonnie. Want to especially recognize all of you that are listening in our um, live stream. Uh, certainly our plans here at the Lamb of God will be that we will have our doors open for full worship again, as we have been doing in the last weeks. And we, we thank you for this little bit of a spell here that we have come across. Bible studies are back in full swing. The uh, list, of course, is in your news and notes and uh, just check on them for all of the activities throughout the week. Uh, just a special note that uh, we're still looking for nominations to serve on the church council. We're looking for someone to uh, be council president and some trustees and, on finance. Uh, Ron Jonas is in charge of that if you would see him as the spirit leads you to serve. This coming Saturday at 5 p.m., we're planning a community bonfire, and certainly all are welcome. We, we pray we have a, as good as weather this coming week as we did last week, but we will wait and see from that standpoint. Members and non-members are certainly invited, and again, more details are in the news and notes. Uh, and just as a reminder, the, our longtime Lamb of God member, Doris Wamsley had passed away last Monday. Her funeral service will be at Schwartz Creek, uh, Schwartz Funeral Home on Hill Road, uh, one o'clock on Tuesday. I think that takes care of all of our announcements and things from that standpoint. Let us pray, ask God's blessings on our worship this day. Lord God, we come to you in worship whatever our situation is, whatever our needs are, wherever you might find us, we find you, Lord. We ask, O Lord, that you would bless this worship, that you would bless the words that are done this day, that our faith in our Savior, Jesus Christ, we would grow and it would be strengthened, Lord. Bless us now with your presence. Drive out Satan, drive out the distractions that always come our way, that he, throws before us that we might hear what you have to say for us and that we might change our minds and follow you in every way. The message for this day is about repentance, Lord. It's a tough subject to talk about. Repentance, we know, has to take place, but maybe we aren't fully understanding of what repentance is, so we turn to your word once again. Bless us now in our worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Do we share that peace with those within your family and all of that? Don't hesitate to do that. We take that for granted even as the few of us say hello to each other here. We sing our opening hymn. Today your mercy calls us.
if you're able. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who may have her. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We take a moment for silent reflection on our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray for your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We have a responsive reading of Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put, put to shame. shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and, and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, according to your steadfast love, remember me, for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All that has the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you exalted your Son to the place of all honor and authority. <laughs> Enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit that, confessing Jesus as Lord, we may be led into all truth through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading comes to us from the prophet Ezekiel. This is also the basis for our message this day is we are called to repentance and to understand what that repentance is. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For in the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn, repent, and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the Philippians chapter 2. It gives us encouragement of what a new spirit and a new heart looks like. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy of being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility, Count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interest of others. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom, you're, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run and labor in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you should also be glad and rejoice with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise in respect to the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple and the chief priest and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question, 
And if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from man, we're afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us now give confession of our Christian faith to one another, as we do that in our homes and within the, here in the sanctuary. We also give that confession to our Lord God Almighty. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our next hymn, Just As I Am, without one plea.
Mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and from the Holy Spirit who would guide us with the words from the prophet Ezekiel given to by God himself. Let us pray. Lord God, I pray that you would guide us and direct us this morning as we consider the words that you have for us. We talk about repentance, Lord. You talk about it. You, you ask for repentance from us. And Lord, we, we sometimes are so unwilling to make repentance part of our life. We, we believe that if we come to church on Sunday and confess our sins, that's enough and that's all that needs to be done. But you share with us, Lord, that repentance is much more than just confessing. Much more than just saying I'm sorry. It means to turn away. And so we ask, Lord, that you would help us and give us the strength, the new heart and the new spirit to turn away from our sin. And now may the words of my mouth and meditations in our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. I'm going to take time out just a minute. Do I need to put batteries in, or is my voice coming through all right? Light. Is it all right? I can hear you. Okay, it just doesn't sound the same to me. All right, let's begin then. About a month from now, we'll be celebrating a, a special occasion, Reformation Sunday. Once a year, we celebrate the Martin Luther and putting those 95 theses on the door. Back in October of 1517, Martin Luther wrote these particular words. It was the first of the 95 theses that was put on that door. And he did this. He said, when our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said repent, he wanted the whole life of believers to be repentance whole life of believers to be repentance. This was the first of his 95 theses. Can you hear? No. Let me stop for a moment and change these batteries. I have some right here. I think they would work. Excuse me a minute. All right, I think we are better. I'm sorry for that. We had checked it out. It was ever looking good when we started, but they uh, went down quickly. So we're set, and hopefully all of you can hear and uh, take, take note of this. So anyways, Martin Luther, in his first thesis that he put down on those church doors, had written those words, when our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said, repent, he wanted the whole life of believers to be repentance. But Luther wasn't the first to preach repentance. Both John the Baptist and Jesus repeat, uh, preached repentance. You remember the words, I'm sure, very well. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is nearer, they said. They weren't the first either. 600 years before them, the Lord used the prophet Ezekiel to preach repentance, as we heard in our text today. And he was only one of a long line of prophets preaching 
this word of repentance, when he, he goes back to really when God, the Creator, the Lord God himself called out Adam and Eve in the garden to turn away from hiding from their sin and, and turn back to him. That's where it started. And so we do well to take a look at this repentance and what it really means and what it calls from a person of faith. You see, it's a matter of life and death. For the Lord God said to Adam, when you eat of it, you will surely die. And so sin and death passed down to us all, but only the way of repentance is life. Repent, turn, and live. Having said that, let me just take you a little bit different way. Why is there suffering in the world? Why are you suffering? Why am I suffering? There are so many things that we try to ignore and that every day something seems to pop up, something question. Well, the Israelites in Ezekiel's time asked the same question. Why are we suffering? They said it wasn't us, but it was our fathers and their fathers who really messed things up. You know, it's the other guy, right? Someone else. Look at what King Manasseh did some 60 years ago. He built altars to idols even in the courts of the Lord's temple. He sacrificed his sons in the fire, practiced sorcery and witchcraft. And now, we're the ones, we're the ones exiled. We've been taken away from our home in Jerusalem to this foreign land. How unfair. God's way is so unjust. To punish us for our father's sins, it's their fault, right? It's always someone else's fault. Ezekiel himself was one of the early exiles brought away from Jerusalem by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. The Lord called Ezekiel to proclaim his word to those in exile, calling them to repentance. But many felt that the Lord God had been unfair to them. It's all those other people that need to repent, not me. I don't know if you caught the, the proverb that was read in Ezekiel. Did you catch that one? Are you familiar with it? You know what it means? The fathers eat sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Really? What's that all about? Well, it is a proverb. It is a saying. The Israelites knew what it meant. It meant something like this. Our fathers did all the bad stuff, and now we, the children, suffer for it. So if you're looking for a good proverb to mix somebody up, go back to Ezekiel. He's got a proverb to tell you who's to blame. It's their fault. And that's part of our human nature, isn't it? To blame others for our problems. Why am I suffering? I try hard. I mean, if you knew the background I was struggling against, you'd see how far I've come. I've, I, I've, I've made big changes. Some things I just can't help them. That's the way I am. That's my upbringing. You can't hold that against me. I've come a long ways even when others are unfair to me. I mean, shouldn't God give me some credit? Shouldn't he be somehow doing something so I should suffer less than those who don't try as hard? Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, please be assured that, that the, that's the exact opposite of repentance. That attitude leads to death being cut off from all hope of eternal life. For you see, even if we tell ourselves we're only blaming other people, we're still blaming God. 
I mean, isn't it ultimately his fault if life is unfair to us? He hasn't dealt us a good hand. He's playing favorites. He should make it better for us, but doesn't. Oh, his way is so unjust. I should be treated much better. The Lord God calls us to account, just as he did for his people in Ezekiel's day. He says, every living soul belongs to me, the Father as well as the Son. Both alike belong to me. The soul who sins is the one who dies. Lord God made us. He's the creator, right? We are the creatures. We are to measure his ways. Who are we to measure his ways by our standards? Who are we to judge him who is the judge of all? He's not accountable to us. We're accountable to him. Rather than comparing ourselves to others, we need to start examining our own heart and not putting blame on anyone else. We each, we each have enough sins to earn us death and hell many times over. <laughs> Scripture is very simple words, says the wages of sin is death. And yet we blame God that our earthly lot isn't as good as we think it should be. The soul who sins is the one who die, God says. Is my way unjust? Is it not your ways that are unjust? So maybe rather than asking why we're not treated better, we really should be asking why we're not treated much, much worse. The repentant heart, the repentant heart knows how great our sin is. The repentant heart abandons all hope in ourselves, in our efforts. The repentant heart confesses daily that Christ's justice ought to condemn us forever. How could there be any life for us? And if God's justice looked at you and me, at our effort, at our heart, at our will, at our mind, At our actions, then even the repentant heart would have no hope, no peace, no joy, no life. But the Lord's justice looks at the cross of Jesus. The cross of Jesus, my friends. Listen how Scripture talks about that and reminds us time and time again about the justice of the cross. Scripture says God presented Jesus Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Again, Scripture says God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Scripture says God, Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. And again, Scripture, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Do you see, do you understand the astounding, amazing, life-giving justice that the repentant heart clings to? Even as the repentant heart abandons hope in ourselves, it clings to hope in Christ to the cross of justice. The repentant heart is something like this. It confesses, how marvelous are your ways, O Lord. How wonderful your justice is above all our ways. For you do not judge us as our sins deserve. You judge Jesus 
as if he were us. Thank you, Lord. You counted our sins against him and punished him in our place. He has fulfilled and satisfied justice for me, for you, for all. So you are just, O oh Lord. Even though you declare a guilty sinner like me acquitted, justified and forgiven, for your credit Christ's righteousness to me, and his is the only righteousness that brings me life now and eternity. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. My brothers and sisters in Christ, these are the words of faith. That's what the repentant heart confesses about the Lord's justice. Justice that judges according to the cross of Christ, which faith clings to. Repentance confesses that God's ways are just, so much more than just than we could ever imagine, so much more just than we could ever deserve. Yes, repent, turn and live, for only in the justice of the cross do we have life. Repent, repent daily. Now, repentance that confesses the justice of God's way, the justice of the cross, that type of repentance flourishes in a new heart, though. And that kind of comes to our second part of our, our message this day. You see, the Lord changes our heart. In true repentance, you receive a new heart and a new soul. The Lord said, rid yourselves of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Maybe that's our downfall. Maybe we want the old spirit. Maybe we want to be us rather than be what God wants us to be. Maybe we want to just be that person. That's the way I am. One of the workplaces I was at, I had an employee that usually grumbled a little bit. And she would come up to me as a manager of the store. And she would say, you know, David, to know me is to love me. And if you can't love me, then with you. <laughs> wow. No repentance, no guilt. It's all about me. That's not a new change of heart. The old heart that we're born with imagines, since Jesus paid for my sins, my sins are not that big of a deal. So why all the repentance? Why not just confess on Sunday and just go about my business? As long as I say I'm sorry and ask for forgiveness, that's what repentance is about, right? Or maybe, maybe I should try a little harder next time. I mean, God's not asking much more from me, is he? Well, my friends, that's the thinking of an old heart. The Holy Spirit and baptism have given us a brand new heart. Yes, the old with its inclinations still tempt us, but the new fights against the old. We sang that song after our confession today, a song that you're familiar with, a song that we've sang for years. Create in me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit within me. Did we just sing the words or is that a real prayer to God that you want a new heart, a clean heart and a right spirit? How often don't we pray those words? For the Lord does not want from you only words of sorrow or outward actions that look good. That's not repentance. He wants your heart. He wants your entire heart along with your body and mind and soul. A new heart, a new spirit. 
devoted to him. I want you to notice the contrast between the old and new that Ezekiel lays out for us. When someone knows the righteousness that comes from Jesus and has followed the Lord, but that then turns away to follow his old heart, he dies. And because of his own sin, faith dies in his heart, separating him from life with God. How, how tragic. Don't imagine. Please, don't imagine that you can follow your old heart and still live a life of repentance. Others might call you a Christian, but God doesn't. You might even call yourself a Christian, but God doesn't. And Ezekiel goes on. He says, but if a wicked man turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he will save his life. Do we understand the meaning to turn away? To turn away from our sin, not just to acknowledge it? We all have those personal sins that the devil keeps knocking at us. But are we willing to turn away from them or are we just going to say, well, that's the way I am? When we worship our Lord, we hear messages, wonderful messages of encouragement in our faith. Do we make changes in our lives or do we say, wow, pastor, that was a great message. And everything stays the same. Words of ugliness, words of hatred, anger, whatever it might be. The new heart is different. The new heart does what is just and right because we know the grace and mercy of our Lord. He takes no pleasure in the death of anyone. Please understand that. That's why he sent his own son to carry our sins to the cross. Our new heart longs to live for him who died for us and rose again. That's repentance. You see, that's when we turn our sorrow and replace it with joy. Replace it with peace. Replace it with hope. Replace it with everlasting life. That's why God calls out from his word from you, for you and me today to turn from our old sinful ways and follow Jesus. Repent, turn, and live. He takes no pleasure in the death of anyone. That's why he gives us a new heart to follow him. Don't let the desires of that hold a heart drowned out the new. Don't turn away from where your new heart leads, no matter how difficult the cross is. Sometimes we say, well, I just don't want to go there. Repent, turn, and live. Let repentance flourish in your new life, your new heart. Repentance is horrified at our sins, but rejoices in the righteousness that comes only from Jesus and his cross. What beautiful words do we have here from Scripture? Because repentance is hard. It is hard to change. And Satan hits us all the time. But the Lord says, The Lord is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Yes, repent. Change. I think Martin Luther is absolutely right. And so do many others, of course. The entire life of a Christian is a life of repentance. And what a blessed life that is, no matter what the cross or the hardship or the tragedy that comes into our lives. For the repentant heart believes that Jesus has made us right with God so that we may have life, eternal life, in his name. Repentance confesses that God's way is just. What a surprising justice when we find the cross of Jesus Christ. Yes, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I too hear that message today to repent, to change. 
I need to seek a new heart always. A heart eager to serve my Lord and do what is just and right. And I pray that would be your prayer as well. Don't live with sorrow. Don't live with saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, day after day, and doing the same thing over. But live with his joy, his peace, his hope, his eternal life. To the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we ask that you would create in us a clean heart and a new spirit. We ask, O Lord, that we would take a close look at ourselves, whether it's a look in the mirror or a look from a distance, whatever, to the things that we do need to change and that we would be willing to make those changes for a heart that speaks of you, speaks of love and forgiveness. Grant us that clean heart, O Lord, for the glory of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time would be our normal time to take the offering. That offering is still available in kind of a sort of a different way, whether you bring it in or mail it in or uh, any number of ways that that can be done online and all. We thank God for your faithfulness as you have served him well in so many areas and also in the giving to support the mission, not just of this church, but the mission of your Lord Jesus Christ. May you continue to do that and know that. Our verse for today is Ezekiel 18, 31 to 32 was changed from the one that is up there now. It says, cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God, so turn and live. Please stand as we sing our offering. <clears throat>
Please be seated. O oh Lord, we are your people, chosen by your grace to be your own possession and granted mercy upon mercy. We are your people who cry to you in need and remember us according to your favor you have shown to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Holy God in heaven, we humbly come before you with contrite hearts, solemnly confessing our sins. How great and how many are our transgressions. Our lives seem to be an unending succession of sins and thought, word, and deed. We're guilty of sins of commission and sins of omission. On occasion we have spoken when we should have remained silent, and have remained silent, we should have spoken up. Lustful thoughts have flooded our sinful hearts. All too often our impatience has turned to anger, and our anger has at times given way to a desire for revenge. The sweet word of love and forgiveness that we should have spoken has sometimes been replaced with sharp and hurtful words, breathing bitterness and scorn. How often haven't we opted for superficial earthly pleasures instead of the heavenly treasures that can be discovered by reading and hearing your word? Oh, the dismal failure on our part to love our neighbors. We love ourselves and to declare our love by peaceful words and helpful deeds. Greed, envy, covetous have at times displaced the contentment and satisfaction that belong to those who place the trust in you. How often haven't we kept for ourselves the goods we ought to have shared with you and those in need? How weak our faith at times has been. How prone we are to complain. How forgetful to pray. How slow we are to trust. How quick to doubt. Oh, Father in heaven, you know us and our sins even better than we do. Indeed, many transgressions of which we are guilty remain hidden from our knowledge even. Cleanse us from these secret faults. Comfort us, we pray, and give us the true peace which comes from your promise that all our sins, yes, our entire debt to the law which we have broken time without number has been canceled out, never again to bar the way to everlasting life. Forgive us for Jesus' sake. Restore to us the joy of our salvation. Create in us a clean heart and a right spirit. Forgive us for Jesus' sake. Make us realize that our bodies are the temples and dwelling places of the Holy Spirit, so that with unflagging zeal we present ourselves to you daily with his help as living sacrifices, ready to do every good work. Lord, in your mercy. Encourage us, O oh Lord, by your Holy Spirit, that we may not lose heart, but being of one mind and one will, may, may serve you with gladness, doing the works of your kingdom and speaking your word of witness throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Shine your light upon us, O Lord, that we may do what is good and right and live as faithful citizens in our nation. Bless our president, our governor, and all those elected and appointed to make, administer, and judge our laws. Lord, in your mercy. Show us your compassion, O Lord, and in your mercy grant healing, comfort, and peace to all those who suffer. Deliver them from their afflictions, pain, sorrow, and fear. We especially pray for all those listed in our worship folder and for these special prayer requests. We have a prayer for Gary, Pastor Mark's neighbor, who suffered a massive stroke and is recovering at McLaren. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would be with Gary and restore his health if it be your will. We pray, Lord, for good medical technology and everything that is necessary. And we pray, Lord, that he, as he improves or whatever his outcome is, Lord, that he will turn to you in praise and thanksgiving. For above all, you have given eternal life through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we pray for 
a member of our congregation who has been tested positive for COVID-19. We ask the Lord for healing. We ask the Lord for protection from infection for the rest of the family. We, we pray, Lord, that you would be with this family and all of their needs at this time. And Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Arthur Walter, who has been admitted to the hospital in the past couple of days. We ask the Lord that you would be attentive to him and his needs, to, to be with the family members as they sit by and wait for results. We pray, Lord, that you would provide the medication that is necessary to, to keep that life going, if it be your will. And yet, Lord, we pray for your will to be done and that it is a good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for the Marcinkowski family and the challenge that they are facing at this time. Pray for Vicki Baculet, who has special needs. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would meet those needs of both of these people, that you would help them through their crises, that you would grant relief and grant them peace now and always. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for members to, of the Lamb of God to come forth and fill the council positions that are available. We ask the Lord that you would visit the hearts of those people. Lord, they know that they are able to do that. and uh, Sometimes it just needs that encouragement, Lord, to, to step forward and, and fill those particular positions that are so important in the work that has to be done in your kingdom. Be with them and guide them in their decision, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. You call us to rejoice together in your blessings, O Lord. We rejoice today with all who celebrate birthdays this week, including Barbara Pike, Naomi Bradley, and Thomas Hansen. Grant to them the continued blessing of life now and eternal life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Guide us, O Lord, that with all our hearts, minds, bodies, and resources, we may serve you. Give special blessing to the Lutheran Women's Missionary League and to the many ways they bring the good news of your salvation and the works of your love across our nation and world. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, help us to remember the faithful who loved and served you, especially we remember Doris Walmsley, who now rest from their labors. Bring us with them to that most blessed day when together we shall dwell in your presence on high forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant to us, O Lord, all good things needful for this body and life and profitable for your salvation, for our salvation. And keep from us all things harmful that sustained in time of want and guarded in time of prosperity we may endure to the day of our Lord's coming, and be judged worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we respond to the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now as we go out into the world in which we live and work and fulfill that repentant heart that God has given us, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace now and always. Amen. We sing our closing hymn.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment to call or text and through your choice of social medias to reach out to your brothers and sisters, neighbors in Christ, especially vigilant, concerning those around you who may need your help with transportation, or groceries, or whatever other needs that they may have. Reach out with the love of Christ as, as his church. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks.